You're watching The Ryan Silverfield Show, presented by AutoZone. The Tigers back in the win column. Now they head to UCF to play on a Friday night. And tonight we talk to J.J. Russell, the linebacker with a new perspective on life. That's coming up on The Ryan Silverfield Show. The game is on. The Ryan Silverfield Show is presented by AutoZone. When you've got car trouble, you want help from number one. So if you've got a battery problem, head to AutoZone, America's number one battery destination. Get in the zone, AutoZone. And by Conway Services, the official HVAC partner of Tiger Athletics. Chick-fil-A, we didn't invent chicken, just the chicken sandwich. RJ Young, technology solutions that power your business. Tennessee Lottery, turning dollars into dreams. The streak is over. Turned out Navy was smooth sailing. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Willotion. And I'm Jarvis Greer. For highlights of the game against the United States Naval Academy, let's go to Cassie Carlson. A short week to prepare for the triple option for the Memphis Tigers hosting Navy on a beautiful Thursday night at the Liberty Bowl. 30,000 in attendance, and it doesn't take long for the Tigers to strike. On the first series of the game for Memphis, it is a good one. Seth Hennigan over the middle, connecting with Javon Ivory. He turns and takes off for a big pickup. Later in the drive, Hennigan fakes the handoff, gets the quick throw out to tight end Sean Dykes. He finds the end zone at Memphis off to an early lead. But on that next Navy drive, the midshipmen do what the midshipmen do. They run out the clock, a 12-minute drive that ends in a short rushing touchdown to tie up the game. But Memphis would get one more play in the first quarter. This time, Calvin Austin gets the pitch, and he takes off. That speed is unstoppable. Couple of jukes. He goes 69 yards to the house. I have a feeling we'll be seeing more Calvin Austin on national TV in the future. 14-7 Memphis. Later in the second, Tigers with the ball. Hennigan looking for his guy in the slot, but the ball is picked off. Navy runs it back. There's a flag on the play to bring it back to the 25. The Memphis defense holds Navy to a field goal. 14-10, Tigers driving again. Hennigan this time hits Eddie Lewis in stride on the slant. Welcome to the 901. The transfer from Rutgers leaves everyone in the dust. Blows a kiss to the crowd as he scores his first touchdown of the season, 21-10. The next Navy drive, John Tate the fourth comes around the edge and he takes down the Navy quarterback, getting a sack, one of four for the Tigers on the night that marks a season high. Before half on first and goal, Brandon Thomas punches in his seventh touchdown of the season to put the Tigers up 28-10 at half. Second half action, Navy scores on their first drive, but Memphis responds as Bartlett native Marquavius Weaver barrels to the bank to cash in six. The Tigers hang on to their first half lead and go on to win 35-17, their first AAC win of the season, snapping their three-game skid. Keeping cool under pressure this week, wide receiver Eddie Lewis. We were told he turned heads at camp and he played his best game yet. A career high and game high, 92 receiving yards on three catches and his first touchdown in a Tigers uniform. Here's Jarwin Willow with head coach Ryan Silverfield after the game. To beat Navy, you got to be tough. You got to be disciplined. Coach, congratulations. Your team was both of those. Yeah, look, I was really proud of their efforts. And like we talked about before, the three weeks of adversity, the way the young men showed up tonight, the belief, and they, they never stopped caring, believing, pushing, fighting, and they kept swinging. And it came to fruition tonight. And that's what I was proud of. All three phases was it perfect. Heck no. But you're right, they were mentally and physically tough, and it showed up to me. And guys stepped up for you, guys that you wouldn't think of, like Zay Collins playing because Pickens couldn't go. Or how about Eddie Lewis, the kid that came originally from Rutgers with uh, three big catches and a touchdown because Calvin Austin couldn't be there and Gabe Rogers was out to begin with. Yeah, look, we're a little bit banged up, but uh, that's what I'm pleased with is the way the young men stepped up. And uh, we've seen a lot of different faces play this year. I can't imagine what the final number count in the season will be all done. Uh, but, you know, it's pleasing to see the depths able to show up. And uh, the guys battled tonight and we had a lot of guys step up and we're proud of them. Speaking of stepping up, your defense came through for you. You finally got some sacks and multiple sacks in this game. And they came at times when you really need to have. Yeah, I didn't think that we'd be our, our best sack game would come against a triple option team, but hey, I'll take it. And very pleased, right? We talked about their opening drive. Man, 7-7, seven, seven, I said, okay, here we go. We're in for one of those fights again. But uh, Coach McIntyre's defensive staff and defensive players, you know, they continue to trust their training, their assignments, and they played Simon Simon. We talked about being mentally tough, and that's what you have to do against going against it. 
continue almost ad nauseum to trust your training, trust the assignment, whatever the call is, and be in your gap, and they were able to do that. And you talk about using your depth. You got uh, Marquavius Weaver, former walk-on, coming in and getting you some big yardage when you needed to have yeah, In fact, it's pretty interesting. Weaver's first game and only game ever starting at running back for us was versus Navy last year. And then he showed up again big tonight. Uh, just proud of him. Obviously, like I said, he's almost a five-phase special teams guy, but his role in offense increased tonight, and he did a heck of a job. So many great stories tonight, that's for sure. So we just saw the triple option. But if you're a coach in the American, you better prepare for a bunch of different O's. One of the great things and the challenges about being in the American Athletic Conference is the different types of offense you'll see, from spread to triple option to RPOs. It's tough, and coach, it's got to mean headache city for you. Yeah, you know, it is such a great conference. It's well-rounded, not only from the offense schemes, defense schemes, special teams. Uh, it's one of the top minds for offensive coaches, what people always say, right? You look at what every team is doing, something different. And then you add Navy, right? the triple option. It's just one of those things that, man, you hope as the rotation goes, because preparing for Navy is a full off season, right? It's not just like any other game. The triple option's a different deal. You got UCF in the zone read. They're gonna do some of the power reads with the quarterbacks. You got teams that are gonna spread you out and go 10 personnel, you know, four or five wide receivers on the field. So always gotta be cognizant of what you're gonna face on a week to week. When you are preparing, let's say, in fall camp, Will you take time out for Navy? Will you point out to them and say, this is the way Temple plays defense? Oh, and by the way, Tulsa is gonna play the same way. Yeah, absolutely. I think that stuff's important. You can't just go out there and say, hey, let's just run our plays versus their plays and expect to be ready for game one. I think you have to give a variety. You know, and that's why we have different situations, whether it be our offense going versus their defense. Well, our defense predicates out of a three down front. Well, there's gonna be times we're gonna to need to see a four down front because half the teams in our conference will play four down. So sometimes our defense has the ability to shift to it. Sometimes we'll actually have to go and get cards and scout team looks and say, okay, here's what we want. And what you're doing is you're servicing each other, right? They may say, hey, Ryan, we know that you don't run a lot of 10 personnel, a lot of just true four wide. You always have a tight end on the field, but this game, can you give us some of that just so we predicate and make sure that we've got different looks so when the season occurs, we feel like we're ready. You mentioned scout team. I, of course, I used to be on the scout team when I was running around here, and it's like, People, I guess, don't realize how much work that those guys have to do to give you, the starters, the good look that you need so you can be successful on Saturday. No question. I think their role is as important as anything that we got to do. Because if I'm a scout team offensive player, not only do I need to know the University of Memphis offense, oh, by the way, hopefully there's 12 to 13, maybe even 14 offenses that I need to learn that year. Week Every week is a new season for them. And I got to get it. So I, if I'm a scout team right guard, well, I want my stance to marry up what the defensive line will go against so I can give him the best look or for us to prepare ourselves. And so it takes a lot of work from them. They have to meet separately. Uh, a lot of times it's not the most glorified position, but their role is just as important as any other role. Last thing quick, how much stealing sharing <laughs> do head coaches do when you see all these different offenses? Well, I think that's part of it, right? Um, uh, and Nick Saban said it best, that it, no good idea is not some, stolen from somebody else's. And there's things I've seen that we've borrowed from somebody else, or you may tweak something. Oh, I like that formation, or I like that run play. Now, how about if we do it out of this and try this with it? So uh, if we're not constantly growing as coaches, I just say, hey, here's my old playbook that's as old as the Dead Sea Scrolls, we got no chance. So you have to constantly evolve, borrow ideas from different people, you meet with them, but then you may see something of an opponent. Uh, we probably taking something from everybody except for Navy. When you look at this Tigers defense, J.J. Russell is electric, one of the leading tacklers in the entire country. But that's not coming from improving his football game. It's coming from meeting someone off the field. You're watching The Ryan Silverfield Show, presented by AutoZone. Linebacker J.J. Russell decided to come back for his fifth year and is having his best season yet. It's not the work he's put in on the field that's led to his success, but the relationships he's formed off the field that's helped him find his best self. J.J. Russell's been a Tiger starter for the last four seasons. Over the years, he's won an AAC championship, and his first bowl game in 2020. What was the decision behind the extra year? Going to the last couple of games, I wasn't even thinking about the next level or coming back to play. I was just more so just focused on the next game. And that was good and bad at the same time because when it ended, I didn't know what to do. So the greatest thing was I just took a step away. Stepping away meant making a decision on his own time. 
He went home to Grenada, Mississippi, worked out, and even talked to NFL scouts. He felt the right thing to do was return for one more go. But this, this time coming back, I had set aside some different goals as far as actually develop a relationship with my teammates and um, trying hard at school because, to be honest, it was on a back burner for the majority of my career here until going into this last year. I made it important and now I graduated and it's just like the relationship aspect has really been the biggest goal for me to really put myself in uncomfortable positions and being a leader because a lot of people don't notice about me like I don't like being around people but it's like and I don't say it like to be in like a bad way but it's just like I get uncomfortable sometimes like it's like I get kind of nervous and it's like all right I know that's my weakness. Russell went from reserved to respected. How do you make that switch to, to let guys know that you want to reach out and you want to be there for them and you want to lead this team? Just stopping and talking to somebody was easy. People were kind of like, I would get like, man, I didn't want to say anything to you because like, you like, I can't approach you. And it's like, I'm not like that. Like, I, I'm goofy but I'm serious at the same time. So it's like, I like smiling, but I don't like smiling. So, I mean, I don't know, I'm kinda, I'm different. His play has been different too. Russell's one of the leading tacklers in the country. And good stop, J.J. Russell. You wanna talk about a tackling machine, leads the country in tackles and solo tackles, and he came shot out of a cannon. Closing speed and the impact. You can see why J.J. Russell came into tonight leading all the nation in tackles. Sure, he has the experience of a fifth-year guy, but he also has the life experience that's changed his approach and perspective. On June 26, 2021, Russell got married to his wife, Amber. Let's start with how you met JJ. We met at a college party. My best friend dated a player and they ended up having some kind of like house party. I met JJ there and then the rest was kind of history. Actually, it gets kind of funny because um, we were having a dance competition and he was the only one that would dance with me. So, and we ended up winning too. The two started out as friends before JJ asked Amber on a date. They've been together for three years. How special is that to share life with someone outside of football? You know, you have something else now besides the game. It's like the, the piece that you, that you, that I've, that I've been missing. Like, she's, she's my everything. Like, she really, she really keeps me going. Yeah, she keeps me balanced. She don't let the stresses that could come with football, she don't let it affect me. And I try to do a good job of not bringing it home as well. And it's just like, I don't know, we're best friends. And I mean, it's just, I'm, I'm thankful. You've seen it all, right? You, you see him earning his starting spot to last year, not having a season. That was how he wanted to end his last year, coming back for another year. How have you seen him evolve as a football player? That's been an interesting journey too, because first and foremost, I barely know anything about football. And so, um, from the beginning of our relationship, like I knew he played. I went to a couple of games or whatever and even cheered for him, but only cheering because I knew like, oh, he hit somebody, so that must be good. So after that, just that middle season, you know, just seeing him and seeing like the difference. There was a difference from the first year and I know he's mentioned him not feeling the feeling really his drive behind why he wanted to play in the first place. So from that to now, it's like completely mind blowing. And coming from my standpoint, I am a believer of Jesus Christ. And so being able to see the shift in him implementing and in him um, growing in Christ, and what that has yielded and produced has been like an amazing journey. JJ Russell wants to be remembered as one of the best linebackers to play at Memphis and the game of football, but he also wants his impact to be felt off the field, whether that's from inviting players over for Bible study or going back to Grenada to hold a free day camp for kids. So I lost my best friend uh, to gang violence. 
Um, his name was Isaiah Triplett. And that changed me as well. It, it changed my mindset on things like, because I always, I always used to ask myself, like, what could I have done? Because once I left off to college, it was like, you know, he was back home, and I got caught up in this life, this football life, and I forgot life, like life on life, like having a relationship with my friend. And um, I tell myself that, like, I want to be somebody that gives advice to kids, somebody that a voice to kids. Like, it's more life than the streets. It's more life than what's around you. And that's why I started the camp. What do you want people to know about JJ that they might not know? So uh, what I would want people to know about JJ is that he is a very loving and kind person. And that surprises people. Like a lot of people think that he's like kind of intimidating because he's kind of like big. And like even some of my friends, they're like, ooh, I'm, so, I'm scared to talk to JJ. But it's really not that way. He's so funny. He is. Once he gets a feel for the room, you can't miss him. Like, he is an amazing person. He's just an amazing person. J.J. Russell is the number one tackler in the country. And the great thing for me is every game, consistently, he brings it. And I know that means comfort for you, Coach. Yeah, absolutely. Look, J.J. Russell is not only a fantastic football player on the field, but he's a tackling machine. Uh, but reality, he's the leader of our team. He's the heartbeat, he understands, he cares so much about this program, it means the world to him. He sits there and studies film, he has a great understanding of what our opponents are trying to do. He's a tremendous leader, he's been a tremendous asset for a long time to this program, and yes, it gives me great comfort knowing that number 23 is out there on the field for us. Now the Tigers look forward to UCF, who have a new head coach in Gus Malzahn. We'll preview the matchup right after the break. You're watching the Ryan Silverfield Show, presented by AutoZone. Let's take a look at the AutoZone Road Ahead. A year ago, Ryan did something no other coach had done since back a long time ago, and that is beat UCF. Yeah, that was a fun one. Uh, obviously, wish you could have done it for more fans, but going down to the bounce house, traveling to Orlando, we know it's a tough place to stay play, all those things. They got those aluminum bleachers. It gets loud. They got a new head coach, Gus Malzahn, world famous. Obviously, he's won a national championship. They're doing a lot of good things down there, but our guys are up for the challenge. Now, they may or may not have their quarterback, Dylan Gabriel, but it's still UCF. They still have a lot of other guys that have caused havoc for Memphis players over the years. Yeah, look, they've got a ton of talent, a ton of skill. Uh, we've seen it year in, year out, right? We've got some great games versus them in the past. Obviously, we like what happened last year. Hopefully, we're trying to find a repeat performance of that down there in Orlando this year, right? They got all conference, they have an all SEC conference D lineman that transferred in. They got transfers all over the place. A head coach that's been nationally recognized. Uh, we're gonna have our hands full, but our guys are excited and ready. That was tonight's AutoZone Road Ahead. AutoZone, America's number one battery destination and official sponsor of Tiger Athletics. Get in the zone, AutoZone. Up next, we travel to Orlando. Let's hope the magic is with Memphis as they take on UCF. You're watching the Ryan Silverfield Show, presented by AutoZone. Thanks again for staying up late with us tonight. We'll do it again next week on the Ryan Silverfield Show. The Ryan Silverfield Show is presented by AutoZone. Next time you need a car battery, just pick it up. Visit AutoZone.com and select Same Day Store Pickup. Just one reason why AutoZone is America's number one battery destination. Get in the zone, AutoZone. And by Conway Services, official HVAC partner of Tiger Athletics. Chick-fil-A, we didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. RJ Young, technology solutions that power your business. Tennessee Lottery, turning dollars into dreams. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation of the University of Memphis Sports Network. This copyrighted telecast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Memphis. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the University of Memphis and Learfield.